Well, welcome back to Rebuilding the Walls, 52 Days to a Healthier Christian Life. I hope your first week was a great week. I'm sure it was as you pressed in on the foundations of your life. Now, we want to build upon that this week, and we want to talk to you about the fact that you really are in a spiritual battle. And if you're in a battle, I want to ask the question, why not go ahead and win it? When Nehemiah was leading the nation to rebuild the walls around Jer Jerusalem, there was immediate and enduring opposition Likewise, when you decide to rebuild the walls of your soul and your spirit, our enemy, the devil, will use any and all of his schemes and devices to wage war against you. Why? Primarily because he hates you. He doesn't want you to win. He wants to leave you, leave you ineffective. If you're not going to spend eternity with him in hell, he wants to make sure that you're ineffective. And God says that we're in a spiritual battle and he has given us tools so that we can win the spiritual battle. So we want to talk to you this week about the key offensive weapons that you have to winning your spiritual battle with God. This is going to build upon the foundational things that we talked about last week. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about spiritual armor and getting ready for battle every day. Then we're going to talk about how to take the Word of God and apply it to specific situations. Nextly, we're going to take Jesus' prayer that He modeled for His disciples and teach you how to use that in a very unique way that's going to help your, that's going to revolutionize your prayer life and cause it to expand and to be more effective than ever. We're also going to talk about fasting as a spiritual weapon. We're going to talk to you then as well about personal worship, the name of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's going to be an awesome week. You're going to love this, and it's going to require you to have a mind to work. So uh, keep pressing through. It's going to be fantastic. Well, let's go first and talk about getting dressed for battle. The reality of the Christian life includes the awareness that there really is another realm. There is a spiritual realm. It is in this dimension where God and the angels exist and where the enemy's primary tactic is to render ineffective the children of God. Satan and his demons hate God but are completely uh, at, at uh, no, uh, no, have absolutely no ability to hurt or threaten him in any way. So, he goes, so the enemy goes after you. You are God's very favorite creation. The enemy is a terrorist in the worst sense of the word. He's a cheap shot artist preying on un unsuspecting mankind. That being said, church, the enemy is a defeated enemy. The word says that Satan was completely humiliated by the cross. The enemy only has then the power that we give him either through willful disobedience or ignorance. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, he to set us free and to give us the choice to embrace life. However, there remains a spiritual battle. Ephesians says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the wor world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces, forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So what is the answer? The answer is putting on the armor of God. What is the armor of God? You're going to study Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 17. You're going to learn about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're going to take up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation, and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's how you get dressed for spiritual battle. That is your spiritual armor. You want to go into battle prepared, all right, not unprepared. And God has given you everything you need to prepare. So put on your spiritual armor every single day. Now, another part of being ready to win the, the battle is knowing how to take the Word of God and apply it specifically to what you're facing in your life. This is, this is your, your primary offensive spiritual weapon. It is the sword of the Spirit, as the Word says. Now, last week, remember, we talked about that you need to, to allow yourself to read the Word and understand that it's really God's love letter to you. But this week, we're going to talk about how the Word can be used as a very specific way to defeat whatever particular challenges that you're facing. Jesus himself, from the moment he was born, was was under the watchful eyes of the enemy. The enemy was just sitting around waiting for a moment to attack Jesus to try to take him out. And it was probably most blatant when Jesus began his ministry uh, right after his baptism. God had said to everybody, said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And Jesus then went on a 40 day fast. It was there in the desert that Satan appeared personally to Jesus, tempting him with the material earthly goods and validating 
his offerings from scriptures. In other words, what Satan did is he actually brought scriptural ideas to Jesus. The devil waited until Jesus was alone, tired, hungry, and probably a little apprehensive, and then he attacked. And the devil will do the exact same thing with you. He's not going to attack you at church on Sunday more than likely. He's going to get to hit you when you're tired and alone. How did Jesus defeat the enemy after 40 days of fasting when he was alone and tired? What he did is Jesus responded to the enemy with the full, the full course, the full value of Scripture, saying, It is written, man does not live by bread alone. It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. The Lord also commanded Satan to then be gone. Jesus fought back, clobbered Satan with the Word of God. This is our primary spiritual weapon today, the, the written and spoken Word of God. So you need to learn, and what you're going to learn in this first lesson here is you're going to learn how to apply the Word of God aggressively to your life and specifically to what you're facing. That's going to be fantastic. You're going to learn how to take specific verses in the Bible, how to find your it is written. You're going to learn how to pray the Word of God. And then as you memorize and meditate those particular verses, you're going to find victory coming in your life and you're going to just start to defeat the enemy. Now, another thing that Jesus provided for us is that he taught us how to pray. Um, that is the, the next important key to winning in your spiritual battle. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And then Jesus said this, and this is the outline for, for how we should pray today. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth that is, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. If you take that prayer, that is the outline for how you can pray successfully every day. Take the simple phrase, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallow his name. You're going to learn here this week how to take the names of God, the names that he's, the characteristics that have been attributed to God and pray that over your life. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done. We're going to pray for the kingdom of God to come first in your life every day. Not only in your life, but then in your, the life of your family. It might be of a spouse or children or close members that you consider family. You pray the will of God in their lives. And then, of course, pray for your church. Pray for your pastor and your leadership that the will of God and the kingdom would, would, would come in their life. And then also, of course, for our communities, our state, and our nation and our world. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread and ask God every day for what you need in order to uh, have all the resources to accomplish God's purposes in your life. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We've got to be a forgiving people. And so God asks us to uh, forgive as we have been forgiven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us evil. Right here, you're going to put on the armor of God again. Remember, every day you want to put on the armor of God so that you're protected against the attacks of the enemy. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So the specific word, how to take, uh, how to take the, the prayer outline that Jesus provided for all of us as his disciples and apply it to our lives. Now, another great weapon that you have in your arsenal, it's a weapon that I'm going to ask you to embrace for the next several weeks, is the weapon of fasting. As a matter of fact, Jesus practiced fasting uh, fairly regularly. And we know that not only did he go on the 40-day 40 40-day 40 fast that I just talked about, but he even told his disciples, he said, sometimes some battles are only won by prayer and fasting. So we're going to encourage you to consider fasting. It almost, fasting almost always implies the giving up, uh, denying oneself of food for some period of time. You know what? You can't fast oxygen. You have to breathe in order to live. But almost everything else you can fast for some period of time. And food is one of those things that, uh, that is a great thing to fast because we regularly have hunger pangs. And they ought to become, when we're fasting, they become signals to us about we need to also take care of our spiritual man. So we're going to ask you to consider fasting something or some way one day a week for the rest of your 52-day journey. And you're going to learn more about that, why fasting is so powerful. Now, as we conclude this week, I want to let you know that you have a, a great opportunity to learn three critical weapons in your spiritual arsenal in defeating the enemy. The first is personal worship. The second is the name of Jesus. And the third is the blood of Jesus. I want to talk to you about those three real quick as we get ready to move on with this week. 
personal worship just is reflective of the fact that you need to fall in love with God so much that you express yourself in praise to Him. Now that probably is going to be in some form of singing. It is for most of us, but it doesn't have to be. It could be in a form of art. It could be in a form of deep prayer. It could be in a form of uh, some other expression of how much you love God. But for most of us, it's in, it's in some form of worship. And I really want to encourage you to start worship on your own. Don't wait till you get to church on Sunday. That ought to be an expression of, of celebration that you've been worshiping God all week. As you worship God, the enemy will start to fight on, or, or the enemy will be fought by the Spirit who's working on your behalf. The Spirit will work on your behalf when you worship Him. You probably have songs that get into your spirit right now, and sometimes you wake up at, uh, at night just singing these songs. That's the Spirit utilizing the worship you've put into your soul to defeat the enemy's work in your life. Isn't that awesome? So personal worship is a great weapon that you have against the enemy. Another incredibly powerful weapon is how to use the name of Jesus to defeat the enemy. The Bible says that Jesus is the name that all, name at which all knees will bow. Now, it is not a magic word. It's not like abracadabra and something happens. But when you use the name of Jesus applied in faith to a specific name, it gives you incredible power over the enemy. In a very real sense, utilizing the name of Jesus is like utilizing our concept of the power of attorney. What does that mean? Well, one granted the power of attorney has the complete authority to act in place of on, or for or on behalf of the one granting the power. In other words, if I'm given the power of attorney over you, you've given me the ability to make any decision for your life, anything about you. When God gave us the name of Jesus, he really gave us the power of eternity, of attorney, the power of eternity to, to speak Jesus' name over anything in our life. So, so he becomes the one that we're operating under. Use the name of Jesus. Use the power of attorney that he has given you. The name of Jesus is one of the major weapons with which you defend and attack the kingdom of darkness. Your hope is not in yourself. It is in the power of the word, his name, and his blood. Now, the last thing that I really want to, to encourage you on as a powerful spiritual weapon is the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, They overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, why is there so much about blood in the Bible? That's a really good question. Blood is a critical concept from the beginning of the Bible all the way through to Revelation. Why? Because life is in the blood. Leviticus says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now, just as light is the only thing that can overcome darkness, so life is the only thing that can overcome death. And the blood is the source of life. Blood carries the life of God, for He is life. Jesus came to redeem man, to purchase his freedom, to restore him to his original state. How could he possibly do that with sinful blood? He had to have pure and unique blood. Jesus is referred to in Corinthians as the last Adam. Thus it is written, the first Adam became a living being in an individual personality. The last Adam, Christ, became a life-giving spirit. There is life in the blood of Jesus, and when it is properly applied, the life is in his blood, will conquer and overcome the death that works in us through sin. Why did it have to be the blood that purchased our salvation? Because the life is in the blood, and life is the only antidote for death. The blood is what defeated Satan, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The blood of Jesus is, is, is the thing that Satan runs from. At the mention of the blood of Jesus, Satan runs and hides because the blood of Christ is what brings us victory and what brings us life. So this is an important week. You've already developed the foundations in week one. In this week here, we've talked about how do you, how do you win this spiritual battle. You're in a battle. You might as well win it. If you don't acknowledge that you're in a battle, you're going to lose it. All right, you're gonna you're gonna lose by default just by not by not fighting. But God's given us everything to be to be victorious. Remember, rebuilding the walls of your life 
Rebuilding the walls of your soul and spirit is not an easy thing. It's going to require work, but it's going to be well worth it. God bless you this week. It's going to go great.